Welcome to the football show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel, sponsored by Indigo Communications. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff and Tam McManus are here with me on this Friday and thank you very much to so many of you who have made it a bumper month for us. Again, fantastic figures and uh, so many people subscribing to the channel. If you do get a chance, hit the subscribe button and join the football family. We've got lots of other content you can enjoy as well as the football show and if you download the app, you'll get all the latest breaking football news and you can watch the program there as well and thank you to so many of you who watch uh, and also listen to the program as a podcast as well great figures well pleased with the way things are going and we've got lots more to come including on monday and tuesday tam looking forward to it we'll be heading down to liverpool we're going to bring uh, everyone down to liverpool with us and do the show from anfield yeah i'm absolutely delighted you've come up trumps with that one i'm uh, looking forward to the game uh, never been to anfield before um, looking forward to big big game for Rangers as well so uh, well done looking yep. forward to it yep it'll be a, a great one of course the ghost of Ruffy will be there yeah, I'll be watching the game as well but I'll be in Spain yeah. yeah obviously I will make a a point of listening to the show yeah you know, I'll get it on my phone as you know I can get it live uh, anywhere in the world yeah absolutely <laughs> I think you can tell by the fact that Ruffy's in Spain that in this 70th year he's winding down now and his appearances on the programme all too f infrequent now Tam it's only a matter of time isn't it, it? As, as the Peter and Tam show is on it's on a card soon well, yeah. it's on next Monday and Tuesday absolutely and of course <laughs> Tam's getting Tam's getting photographs taken which is why his head will be superimposed on Ruffy shortly anyway apart from that we'll have some special guests and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy the programme Monday and Tuesday Day ahead of Liverpool against Rangers and over and above that we'll have all the latest news for you so hit the subscribe button if you do get a chance and if you want to post anything you want to talk about today we'll be more than happy uh, to read out some of your comments um, Ruffy the gloves congratulations to Ronnie Chapman who's oh, yeah. the he's the winner of uh, the uh, the gloves so oh, uh, we'll get uh, Ronnie to um, basically send us his email address and his overall address and then we will uh, we will contact him send out the gloves and the sign that a wee bit of memorabilia will be his yeah it'd be fantastic I'm sure I don't think he'd want to use them unless he's got any kids in the house that are, are budding goalkeepers so uh, yeah they'll obviously put on his mantelpiece or something like that or in a, a, a nice place in the house yeah, absolutely. Um, a cupboard. Yeah. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, the gloves. Next week, we'll be giving away some more uh, goodies and some special ones at that. I think you'll enjoy some of the prizes we'll be giving away over the next three or four weeks. Simple as that. Um, I've got to, yeah, and Gallant says, well done to Ronnie. Ronnie wins the gloves signed by Ruffy. Um, I've got to mention this. Hi from Sean from Australia, who says, I just want to thank you for keeping me upbeat over the past few weeks. I've been recovering from prostate cancer surgery uh, for the past several weeks and not sleeping well so I've been watching the show about three o'clock in the morning um, enjoy the variety of guests and the reports from your young reporters who are doing a great job keep up the good work um, and of course I think this was Sean who sent us a picture of his man cave as well he's looking forward to Celtic heading over there in the uh, November the month of November so Great for Sean. Always good to see people uh, on the uh, the road to recovery. Let's hope, uh, Sean, that you get back to full fitness from everyone here in the team. Um, OK, uh, domestic football, you're looking forward to it, Tam, because you're not a big fan of international breaks. No, I don't like international football. I've never, never liked it, to be honest, and I'm glad that the you know the SPFL's back. Listen, it's been a good good week or two for Scotland. You know, we've, we've, we've got into, the, into the, the, the qualifiers, so I'm looking forward to the, the bread and butter stuff and... It all starts with Rangers and Hearts, a great game. Yeah, it's going to be a cracker, 12.30. Um, Hearts um, against Rangers is part of uh, all six games, unusual Ruffy, all six games on the Saturday. Uh, 12.30, the only one uh, that's the early kick-off. The rest of them all taking place around about 3 o'clock. Here's how it all pans out for you if you want to have a look and see which game uh, attracts you. Hearts against Rangers, Aberdeen, Kilmarnock, Celtic against Motherwell, Dundee United, St Johnston, Ross County, Hibbs and St Mirren against Livingston so uh, that's the games on offer and uh, of course quite a lot of you are talking about not only the games but of course uh, Tam's clobber and because this has got to have been <laughs> It's got to have been the smartest he's ever been. Bartholomew says, Tam's arrived as a wedding singer. It's got, be, it's got to be the smartest he's ever been on the show, Ruffy. Yeah, he certainly is. He's so 
Suited and booted uh, for, I think he's going to see his mum and dad tonight. Well, Darren thinks he's going to Gary O'Connor's for dinner, so <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows? Because uh, uh, obviously, yeah, from. yeah, absolutely, your gear looks <laughs> great. Um, so, you no, know, he's not going there, but nevertheless, we get where you're going with it. Um, so, lots of people are commenting on the gear that you're wearing, but uh, nevertheless, uh, Tam's in good form. Uh, Ruffy, on the other hand, staying in tonight, as you can see. Um, so, Hearts against Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> Before you start, he's got a nice Ralph Lauren shirt on, dress trousers, and a pair of sketches. Yes. Don't start knocking sketches. <coughs> well, you know, get shoes or something to go with. No, no, no. He's, he's, bought, he's bought them and he's wearing them with everything. Them every day. Yeah, no, absolutely. But they, just wear them every day. Yeah. But they go with everything apparently. You know, it doesn't matter if he was wearing purple <laughs> trousers, he'd have the grey sketches on because they're comfortable for his feet. Um, hearts against Rangers. I mean, Hearts could go second, Ruffy, if they can pull off a win here. Yeah, I get where Tam's coming from. The the league is now exciting. Uh, I think everybody thought that Celtic were going to run away with with a five point lead. That they had and they were hadn't been lost for how many games? 36, 36 or 38 yeah. or something. And then all of a sudden St Burn beat them. Rangers are back in it and they'll they'll be going there to Tynecastle tomorrow to just do what you've exactly said there. Yeah, go, they can go level. Point. They can go level. Oh. Sorry. Rangers can go top I meant to say yes, I apologise. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's the objective when they go there, that'll be the motivation. Uh, they could have been at one stage eight points behind, but they're not. They're still hanging on in there, and tomorrow will be a big, big game for them. Yeah, I, I mean, that is the, the, the ultimate thing that James Tavernier mentioned, uh, Tam, was quite simply, you know, for all the hysteria that followed a, a Celtic Rangers game, which undoubtedly, you know, most of the city goes absolutely crazy, suddenly they're only two points behind. They're not playing really well. There's no point in kidding on about it. I mean, a lot of Rangers fans were far from... Um, you know, happy with the, the, the display against Dundee United, albeit it was a win. Yeah, I, I think they're, they're grinding out results. They're, they're certainly not flowing the way they were last season, or even under Steven Gerrard, but, you know, they're, they're grinding out. That was a big result against Dundee United, particularly when Celtic lost the next day, you know, and as you've said, we all, we all spoke in this show, we all fancied Celtic maybe to go unbeaten all season, so it just shows you, you never predict anything in football, and nobody's seen that result coming, and I just say, Rangers go to Tynecastle and get a hard game. If they go there and win, they go above Celtic. All of a sudden, the pressure eases on on the, on the players, on the manager. And uh, you're looking at a Rangers team who are still to hit top gear. So if you're a Rangers supporter just now, you know there's, there's still plenty of gears for Rangers to go up. Whilst I think Celtic are, are playing really, really well, and I don't know if they've got gears again to go up. Yeah, you think they've reached the ceiling point? No, I don't think they've reached the ceiling, but I think they're just... Some of the football they were playing up until that game, you know, 9 nothings and... You know, I just think that they were playing out their skin and Rangers have got so much more to produce for me. They've not produced anywhere near it. And if they can go above, you know, in the first what, quarter of the season, then you never know. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Of course, uh, Hearts at home, Robbie Nielsen, the manager, reckons they are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, there's a team for international players. You know, a very, very good team. You know, success in Europe last year. And we know it's going to be a tough game, but we feel we'll play at Tide Castle. Full house, you know, we've got a great record there and we expect to win games there, so for us, it's an opportunity. Yeah, Robbie doing his best as the whispering manager. He's turning into Bob Harris on Radio 2, isn't he? Um, so I, think, I think we might need to put some titles up half the time. He just whispers and we'll get the mic up full. Apologies if you can hear him, but uh, I think he was basically on the basis on the basis that at home, they've won three games at home in the league, so... You know, it is a place intimidating, but I, I you know, whereas I love that that stadium, Ruffy, you've got to have players on the part that can believe, and I think that's the, the <clears> difference. <throat> believe that you can go and, and and take on the likes of Rangers and Celtic and beat them. Yeah, well, that's what he's got to do as a manager. He's got to uh, make the players believe that they can, and they have done it before. They've done it to Celtic. They've done it to Rangers. And any given day, you know, the support will be a big. A big thing in their favour, uh, and it is an intimidating place. You have to play particularly well to get something out of the game. Uh, I, I agree that uh, I have they seen the best of Rangers yet, but I still think they've got quality in that side to go and win this game. You know, I, I'm going to stick with Rangers on this one, but I think they'll have to play particularly well. Yeah, um, Robert Snodgrass. I've only seen a little cameo from him against Motherwell. This might be a game where maybe in the Second half, he may get more minutes again in this one. He's revealed he's been training with Andy Carroll, just trying to get up to real fitness for this. It's always difficult when you come into a club late. You know, I've done that myself a couple of times when you miss the pre-season and you miss maybe the first four or five games and you go in when the window closes. 
and he's probably a good bit behind the rest of the players but I think the, the fact that the international break came at the right time for him I'm absolutely certain he'd have been running his you know what's off at training and he'll be getting himself fit while he'll be ready to play possibly maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes at the end but he needs, he needs games I was reading the day that he's no eligible for the B team and they can't until if Hearts get through they can play again so it's, been, it's probably a problem for him to get game time and that's all important at that age to get to get game time OK, um, what about Rangers? Um, Ryan Jack was speaking to uh, the small amount of press that Rangers speak to these days um, and this is what he had to say We know if we go on a consistent run it'll take us where we want to be Tomorrow is another step in doing that The ability we have is at a high standard We can play a very exciting game if it clicks on the day It's a good game to come back and try and get the three points We've had meetings with the players and the staff We need to keep improving The demands are really high and we have to meet those demands We've had the international break to reflect and refocus. So they've had a wee meeting uh, together to have a chat. Um, who else had the meeting? Was it the United players? Yeah. Had a, every player's mm -hmm. teams seem to have crisis these mean. crisis <laughs> meetings. Yeah. Well, it's not a crisis when you're winning. Um, no, you know, sometimes it's good to, to have a wee meeting and, and throw a few things out there and get some feedback. You know, as long as it's a it's a well controlled one. You know, want you don't want people. No pointing fingers at people, and then it just turns a bit, it gets out of hand, and you don't want that, you know, because you know what's at stake. So, no, I think sometimes it can be positive, but usually when you have them meeting, there's only two or three people chip in. Mm. Yeah. It's only two or three, and everybody just sits there. It's anybody getting to say and they say it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's like that if it's the, it's like that usually if it's a manager. But when the players are there, it depends if you get strong people in in the dressing room. I mean, James Tavernier for me would easily be one of them. I think Stephen Davis is so experienced that if Steve, if, if I was in the dressing room, Stephen Davis got up, I would be listening. Yeah, I think that uh, the experienced players are important in the meetings. I think uh, I don't think if, as a young player you've got the the courage to, to speak up I think yeah. the experienced players mo do most of the talking in the meetings that I've been in you might be get the older, younger player put, uh, stepping up but nah I, I, th I think that Rangers will be I think Ryan Jack they, they had a few a chat about a few things and you know they try to clear the air maybe and but I, I don't see any, any issues going forward with Rangers yeah the only problem that, that I, th I think is a worry at the back end uh, Ruffy is players that are fit you know because you get Connor Golson in there you've got Ben Davis back fit um, as well Tom Lawrence is out John Suter and Philip Hollander are out you don't want to be picking up too many uh, uh, other injuries especially in the centre of defence No I always think centre of defence is a strong point of the team if you've got two guys in there who are playing week in week out you know and they're really good players I mean we saw that time when Rangers were really difficult to lose no, to break down. Yeah. You know, there was a time there when you you struggled. Anybody struggled to score against them, but that isn't the case now. So they've got to start scoring goals up, up the other end. But